Rebecca Newbern, the coordinator and co-founder of the Richmond Grove Seed Lending Library. I want to explain what a seed library is, how we got our own seed library started, as well as share some resources about how you can start a seed lending library in your own community. And then in the last two years, there's a number of seed libraries that have opened up, so I want to share some of the different models that are out there, as well as some of the projects that are starting up around the seed library idea. And then lastly, I want to share our kind of intention of where we'd love to see this idea go. Welcome to the Richmond Public Library, home of the Richmond Grows Seed Lending Library. When deciding where to put the seed library, two things I was interested in were having it available to the general public and being easily accessible. The public library seemed like such a natural fit since public libraries have been a foundation to access to books and knowledge that allowed people to transform their lives. Our intention was to provide access to seeds and education about seed saving and organic gardening to help transform our community by providing access to fresh, healthy food that might otherwise not be available. We were also interested in creating a self-sufficient and resilient community. Besides the public library providing a house for our seed library, they've also done numerous displays featuring books about gardening and seed saving. The missions of both the public library and the seed library seem to complement each other nicely. The first question most people ask is, what is a seed lending library? And if I borrow the seeds, how can I possibly return them? And the basic idea is that people can borrow any seed from the collection, and then we provide free education about seed saving so that people plant some of the seeds, let some of them go to maturity, and then return some of next generation seeds for other people to borrow. The Seed Lending Library is a self-serve library. It's open whenever the public library is open. We do encourage people to either attend an in-person orientation that's run by volunteer facilitators or watch our online orientation. We also have a brochure explaining how the library is organized and the responsibilities of using it. We serve a large urban community that's very diverse. We have three cabinets. Our main cabinet is our edibles. We also have an ornamentals cabinet that has flowers and California natives, and a third one that has herbs, both culinary and medicinal. We have resources on our website on our Create a Library page at richmondgrows.org that explains how we set up our library and has downloads to all of our organizational information. One of the things we emphasize is our super easy, easy and difficult system, and that's just a way to get people that have never started to save seeds started, and we encourage everyone to save seeds from their super easy plants. We also have ways to track our system, such as membership forms, and we also have a downloadable database as well as for other libraries to use, as well as a paper copy version of our checkout and return sheet. In our first several years, we expect to be heavily reliant on commercial donations, but even our first year, we had a number of local seed savers step up and start to donate seeds. This is the form we use for people to borrow as well as return seeds at the end of the season. We've also started a couple of projects. One of them is the community seed garden at the public library. Uh, it was an existing garden that we've uh, started to work on and we are, we're growing seed for Richmond Grows. So the seeds harvested from this community seed garden will be available for checkout at Richmond Grows. So this is a demonstration site, it's educational as well as seed production. We'd love to see community as well as school gardens, maybe even private gardens, having seed saving going on with signs posted so people can see what's going on. These signs will be available on our website. Another project that we have is the dye plant project. And what that is is that some of the plants in our collection that have can be used for natural dyes have a little dye stamp on it. We worked with an organization called Permacotour that provided uh, the resources and they also suggested some books for our library to purchase and not only do we have a class on natural dyes and fibers but we also now have a nice collection of books that people can check out from the library to learn more. Richmond Grows opened in May of 2010 and since we've opened over 35 other libraries have opened up and it's been super inspiring to see the work of librarians as well as nonprofits coming together and creating their own vision of how to create a just and sustainable food system within their own communities. This is, I'm going to present a couple of examples. So this is the Alameda Free Library, Green Thumbs, Green Mind. And this was organized by both a librarian and a nonprofit with funding. 
and from a grant and they have a tool lending library um, as well as the seed library. The seed library is available to anyone in the public, but the, the tool garden and garden tools in specific um, is only available to Alameda uh, free library members. And some of the tools are out and available for checkout. And then some of the more sharp tools are behind the reference desk and you would just pick up the little card, take it to the circulation desk and check out the seeds from there. The community of West Clift, Colorado has a seed library that was organized by some individuals along with the local sustainability group and in cooperation with some of the librarians. They have a beautiful cabinet that was um, built by a local craftsperson. So there's lots of interesting ways to involve the community in your project. Seed folks, which are two very talented artists, uh, were two of the main organizers behind the Cesar Chavez Library in Oakland. And much of the collection has beautiful artwork, a wood prints done by these two women. And the materials, many of them are translated into Spanish because the Cesar Chavez Library serves a largely Hispanic population. And these resources will be available to anyone who has a large population of Spanish speakers as well. I'm a middle school math and science teacher, and last year my sixth grade earth science kids had a project called Mission Sustainable, and a group of them decided to actually create a seed lending library in the school. They actually used the resources on the Create a Library page at Richmond Groves, and with very little direction from me, we're able to put most of the library together. And it will be opening shortly in about a week. Seed lending libraries are popping up all over the place. Not only are they in public libraries, they're in museums, they're in cooperative extension agencies, they're showing up in churches and places of worship, as well as private houses where people are opening their spaces up to the public a couple times a month to share seeds and come together in community. As I mentioned, if you're interested in getting started, we have a create a library page on the Richmond Grows website. It has lots of resources to get you started and numbers of libraries have used it to help themselves get themselves started. In the last two years, there have been numerous seed libraries opening up. There's lots of different manifestations and uh, collaborations that are happening. So back in September of 2011, a group of about 20 of us met at the National Heirloom Expo in Santa Rosa and decided that we were committed to creating a national organization uh, supporting the seed library movement called Our Seeds. Uh, right now you can get a lot of the resources on how to create a library uh, at the Richmond Grove site. However, eventually we're going to be having this Our Seeds website that'll share resources for existing seed libraries as well as communities that are interested in putting in some type of seed initiative project in their own community. So we hope you follow our progress and we hope you join us on the journey. If you do open a seed library, please let us know at richmondgrows at gmail.com. We have a list of sister seed libraries and we'd love to add you to the list. Also, feel free to contact us if you have any questions.